I got a bit chatty on this one and this video got way longer than planned. If you're just here for the results, jump to just about 11 minutes and 15 seconds. If not, hang out and enjoy the video. So I drove down to San Diego for 4th of July weekend and yeah, as I plugged in at my cousin's house to charge um, into a 120 outlet versus 240 because he didn't have one available, made me really think about kind of what is the difference in the superchargers, what is the rate difference, and making sure, you know, that people who are driving Teslas have a good feel for that because it does make a difference in both um, your ability to just get up and go somewhere, but also the time it takes you from drive to drive from A to B. So for reference, when I was plugged in on 110, I was charging at anywhere between four and five miles an hour, which means it took forever to get a full charge. But I was basically just parking in the garage and leaving it for three days anyway, so that didn't really matter. Plugging in at 240, I actually haven't done, I don't think, or I don't, oh, I did actually. I, I plugged in at Laguna Seca. Um, I can't remember what the number is, but maybe I've got it on a video somewhere. I'll check that. And then when I plug in at home on the wall charger, I get about 36 miles an hour. So this is a 75 kilowatt shared. Um, don't know if it's paired up or not. Well, that's interesting. It's way more than I expected out of a 75 kilowatt. 258 miles an hour, 63 kilowatts. Okay, so it kind of is where it is. Full speed on these ones. Kind of doing the math, if we got up to the 75, would be about 300 miles an hour. When you're searching for superchargers, I think something Tesla needs to add is the ability to search by the um, strength of the supercharger, either 75 kilowatt, 150 kilowatt, or the new 250 kilowatt. So this one, you know, it's or I guess there's 72 kilowatt. You find it right there, but it's kind of hidden, and you have to search around to see which ones are. There's 150, that one's closer, I should have gone there. Um, but anyway, you kind of have to search around to find the strong ones and you never know where you're gonna end up. The 72 kilowatts are nice if you're kind of at the mall and gonna go in and stay for a while, but if you're road tripping, you either wanna find the 150 or the 250s as quickly as possible. So a filter somewhere right here would be really good. Hey Elon, if you're listening, give that some thought. As Tesla continues to have record deliveries of cars every month and quarter, the supercharger network is going to continue to get busy, so I think the V3 will make a big difference as they start rolling those out and can charge at 250 kilowatts. I think that's going to make a huge difference. But other things that Tesla is going to have to start thinking about is how do they more effectively route people to superchargers, um, especially those that are trying to um, commute with it rather than just kind of go charge up while they're at the store. Um, one thing I think they could do is essentially when we're looking at a supercharger here, yes, you can see how many people are there and how many stalls are open, but they should be able to say how many people are have already kind of put that in as a navigate there, right? And will they beat you there or not, right? So if this has four open stalls, if four people were already navigating here and I was further away than them, I should know that. And I should be able to kind of tell how much longer these people at least have to have to charge up. Now, obviously, you'd have to figure out the best way to do that graphically so it doesn't become overbearing. But you could kind of say, hey, you know, by the time we you get there, even though it's full now, there might be room or vice versa. And the more they can get that information and use that information, they can change where you route, right? Rather than going to kind of the, the 5 or 10% line that they they pick now when they're routing you to a supercharger, they may say, hey, stop at this one, you'll still have 20%, but we know it's gonna be available when you get there and it just sort of makes more sense. If you have any ideas on, on how they could make the network better or routing better, leave them in the comments below. I just got to the Tijon Ranch supercharger, I'm trying to come in at about the same mileage, somewhere around 110, 150. Um, you know, somewhere in that range, so I'm starting at the same charge point so I can show you the difference in charging speed. Anyway, so this is a 150 kilowatt max charger. Right now I'm at 134, which will give me roughly 546 miles of range per hour. I've decided I'm gonna try and get to Fremont with the lowest battery possible to see just how fast the version three of the supercharger is when you're low. 
I've never really hyper mild like some people do. I'm supposed to get there with like 3% left, maybe it's four now because I've been paying attention to it, but I feel like I'm going way too slow. I've got the AC off, so it's super hot in here. So I'll just turn the camera around here so you can see the screen. Projected range at 48 miles. Um, you know, I'm not doing that great right now, but okay. And I have 38 miles left to get there. So that puts us there at 4%. A little bit left to go. I think I'll be okay, but 4% is roughly 12 miles, so that makes me a little bit nervous, but I think if I go along at this um, this pace for a little bit with the AC off, I'll be just fine, and I can actually turn it back on and pick it up in a little bit, but this will probably be the lowest that I've taken it. So it turns out that the range calculations are actually pretty accurate. The second I slowed down a little bit to under 75, uh, and even under 65 at one point, and turned off the AC, I got a big bump in range and now I'm fine. Um, I'm actually probably gonna try and drive, drive around a little bit extra and maybe stomp on the accelerator a couple times. As I get closer to you know, be as low on range or low on battery as possible when I arrive. So anyway, for those of you who have a Tesla, leave a note in the comments below. Do you still get range anxiety or now that you've had it for a while, uh, are you comfortable with the car? See you at the supercharger. Here we go, pulling into the Fremont factory and the supercharger. I've got 10 miles of rated range left, which means in real life I probably have, I don't know, six, seven. We'll step on it once or twice here just to kind of pull back on the range, get us as low as we can as we pull in. Um, I didn't actually check to see if there were open stalls. I hope they are and I don't have to sit here too long, but it will be kind of the lowest I've ever taken the car and it will be a good test of the V3 superchargers. So for the most part it just looks like a normal supercharger. There's a V2 right next to it and I'll try and get a better angle. I think the only difference that you'll see on the outside is actually that the the cable itself is a whole lot thinner than the V2. That's because I believe they are now liquid cooling the cable. So I'm going to spin around. We've got the V2 right here. You can see that it's, you know, significantly thicker. But other than that, well, and the little sticker that now says V2 on the old ones, they're about the same. You'll notice about the V3s is they seem to have a significantly louder fan in them. I'm going to get up close to the base of the charger here so you can hear it. Well, the unpaired one that I just pulled into turns out that is actually a V2 supercharger. So not all of them here are V3s, but I found one, it is paired, but I'm told that with V3 uh, pairing doesn't matter, but we'll see once I plug it in. In and about to start charging here. It's just doing its little test that it typically does. And I'm going to set up the camera here. Hopefully I can get the right angle. Um, and just leave it running for a little bit, maybe with a bit of a time lapse. Coming up, it's 20 kilowatts as it speeds up and tests the, the cable. This seems like it might be a little slower to ramp up than the other chargers, but I think that sort of makes sense as it's moving more power, it wants to be more... Um, the computer's probably testing to make sure it's a bit more safe and secure. So now we're past the 150 kilowatt mark. That would be the speed of the other traditional V2 superchargers. Now that's interesting. It seems to have topped out at 191 kilowatts. I believe these are supposed to be 250. I'll check that again, but Maybe it's uh, when the battery's super low, it can't go more than 191. Again, I'm gonna let this run, do a bit of a time lapse, and we'll see if that changes over time. It does say it's 250. So this doesn't become the most boring time lapse in the world. I'm gonna grab my uh, iPhone and do a couple of shots outside of the new V3 charger 
and maybe show you what it looks like inside at the Fremont Supercharger. So I just realized a problem with me stepping inside, uh, the screen will turn off. So maybe I'm just gonna sit here for a little bit. Well, I have plenty of battery to get me home at this point, but we'll let it run a little bit longer. I would love to see it get up over 200 kilowatts closer to the 250 probably not gonna happen because it is just busy here that's too bad but honestly even getting up over the rated power capacity of the v2 makes a huge difference I think even kind of at full capacity on the other ones in this uh, particular state of charge when you're low you're you're getting maybe 500 550 miles per hour so this is a big increase and as long as every or the majority of superchargers they put at least in high commute areas are v3s then i think that will work out great for the community so here are the results across all the different types of superchargers now i didn't get to test them all but i estimated some numbers based on the average miles per watt hour that came out that seems to come out very consistent at a 3.9 to 4.1 miles per hour per kilowatt regardless of the charger so that must be based on the car and the battery technology but here are the numbers i'll leave it up for a second i can't wait till i get to see that full roughly thousand miles an hour at a v3 supercharger totally rip off I want Tesla's what if videos which I think he did a great job putting those together but as I come up with questions that I'm curious about that will help either current or new Tesla owners learn about their cars or learn about a car they might want to get I am going to pull these together so I'll think about some additional questions but I'd love for you guys to kind of write in and I can help you answer questions as well and if you haven't gotten your Tesla yet don't forget to use my referral code it's down in the description below it'll get you some free supercharging and it'll get me a little free supercharging as well so thanks in advance